What's up guys, I'm Chris and this is Tech Random. If you've been keeping up with the channel, you'll know that I am hard at work on the new version of my LED wall. You can see all of these 3D printed parts behind me, but that is not what this video is gonna be about directly. I am gonna be talking about some of the updates, but the primary focus of this video is gonna be the LilyGo T-Display S3. It's an ESP32 based fully integrated dev kit that works with the Arduino ID and it comes with this beautiful 1.9 inch LCD display for the resolution of 320 by 170 pixels. In this video, I'm gonna be diving into all the ways that you can integrate this device into your projects, as well as how I'm using it to develop the software for my new LED wall. Now let's look at the device itself. Obviously this display is amazing and you can see it has a really high refresh rate and all of that is enabled by a microcontroller on the back, ESP32 S3. And I'm gonna run through five reasons why this is the microcontroller that you should be using on your projects. The first and most obvious reason you you should choose the ESP32 S3 for your project is the incredible processing power. It has a 32-bit dual core processor that runs at up to 240 megahertz, making it the most powerful microcontroller in its class. The high clock speed means it can handle really complex tasks, and the dual cores means that you can actually run two processes completely independently of each other simultaneously. Second is the built-in connectivity. The ESP32 S3 comes with built-in Wi-Fi and Bluetooth, making it extremely useful for Internet of Things projects or connected devices that you want to synchronize with a phone or computer. The S3 upgrades from Bluetooth 4.2 to Bluetooth 5.0, which is twice as fast and has four times the range. The third reason is the built-in USB that is brand new to the ESP32 S3. This feature means you can integrate with any PC over the USB port directly, although it is limited to USB 1.1 speeds, so don't expect to be able to transfer massive files very quickly. The fourth reason is the ease of use. The ESP32 S3, unlike other similar microcontrollers, can be programmed easily with the Arduino IDE, and there are thousands of pre-made libraries that make all of the functionality extremely accessible. It's as easy as copying and pasting. And the final reason you should be using this microcontroller in your projects is the price. With all of its advanced features, the ESP32 S3 is still extremely affordable. Right now, you can get a dev kit on Amazon for right around $10, making it way cheaper than even an Arduino Uno. And if you go on AliExpress, you can buy them in bulk for as low as $5 a piece. Huge thank you to JLC PCB for sponsoring this video. I was able to use their services to make my own ESP32 S3 based dev kits, and these use the exact same microcontroller that is in the T Display S3. To make this board, I started by drawing out all the parts I wanted to include, like a switch to swap between USB and supply power, and all of these headphone jacks I'll use to share data between the board. I went to easyeda.com to draw my schematic. You can access the entire JLC PCB parts library, and it makes it super easy to compare prices and pick the best parts for your project. Once your schematic is done, with one button, you can create a PCB design and it'll put all of your parts here where you can just drag them into this pre-designed stencil they did, or you can create your own custom shape. And once all your parts are laid out, you can use the auto route tool or manually route your lines, depending on how experienced you are with that. But just like before, it's super easy to just go down here and ordering your PCB is just as easy. With a single click, you can one click order PCB SMT. And just like that, it brings you straight to JLC PCB's website where you can calculate your price and add them to your cart. I got my parts within a week and it came out exactly how I designed it. If you have a project in mind and you don't want to deal with the hassle of soldering, I highly recommend checking out JLC PCB. And if you use my link down in the description, you can get up to $60 in coupons towards your order. And now that I've sold you on the microcontroller, let's get back to the other features of this T-Display S3. Back here, it has a battery plug and there's a full battery management system built in here. You can actually plug in a LiPo battery and it will be able to charge over this USB-C port. You also get these two buttons down here, which you can program in software to do whatever you need them to. I'm currently running an example made by Volos Projects and he's a really smart guy. He has lots of examples. We'll look at a couple more later, but uh, this one just takes the analog reading on pin 12 and displays it here. Very interesting. And it shows the time and some other information. Overall though, a very cool little device. And we have a reset button up here that resets the device 
device and it takes a second to start back up as it has to connect to Wi-Fi. But yeah, overall a very cool kit. Obviously the main attraction though is going to be this edge to edge display. It's 1.9 inches diagonal with a resolution of 320 by 170 pixels and you can display a ton of information on here. You can actually get it to run GIFs and images which I'll show you but I think it's super useful just to even display text if you want debug messages for testing out code running on this ESP32 here just to free up your serial monitor in case you want to use the UART for something else in your project. So lots of cool features. We're going to dive into some of the example software and how to actually program on this thing right now. So the first thing we're going to be taking a look at is a simple hello world sketch. We're just going to initialize the serial monitor and start printing hello world. There are a few things to note when you're programming with this thing. In order to get it into programming mode, you have to hold down this button right here and click reset. And you'll notice the screen doesn't come back on when you do that. That is because it is in the bootloader now. So once we're in here, there's a couple things we need to change over here. In tools, you'll need to pick your port and your board as an ESP32 S3 dev module. Um, but you'll also need to make sure that you have a USB CDC on boot enabled. If this is disabled, you will not get any serial prints. Once you have that set, all you have to do is upload. And you can see it's done uploading now. So we have to go ahead and hit reset without holding that button. And now it is actually running. Obviously there's nothing on the display, but if we come over here and open up the serial monitor, just like that, you can see we are printing out hello world. Now, as I mentioned before, you can actually modify that sketch to use the TFT display instead of printing to the serial monitor. And all I've done is create a TFT object using the TFT eSpy library and then replace serial print line with TFT print line. And when I reset start here, you can see we are just printing hello world straight to the display. So you can have all your debug messages from your code displayed on this screen, making debug super easy as you're going through and testing out features or whatever your project might be. Very cool feature. Now, since this device has a built-in display, you can actually use Bodmer's animated GIF library uh, and you can just download that code and click upload. And as you can see, you can just display GIFs out of the box. Super easy and intuitive. And it's actually a pretty cool way to use the screen. Now, one thing that I have tried is playing video files off of an SD card and you'll actually find that the bottleneck of that is going to be the speed that the SD card can display at and not actually the refresh rate of the display. It plays extremely fast as you can tell here. And the final example I want to talk about comes from Volos Projects. His YouTube channel has a ton of fully open source completely free projects for the T-Display S3 right here and similar microcontrollers as well. This one is really cool. It's a poker game where you can actually go through and save certain cards and then this top button draws and you can see we got a pair so we won two just a fun little example project and here we actually got triples so stuff like this really shows just how capable this device is and all the crazy things you can do with it you know just as a fully developed kit you can just stick a battery on here and have a game wherever you go just such a cool use and volos projects has tons of other examples of games he has like a snake game and a few other ones so i definitely recommend checking him out if you want to see what this device is truly capable of. If you've made it this far in the video, then I'm assuming that you are into electronics projects like this. So I want to know down in the comments below what types of projects you're working on, or if you have an idea, but you don't quite know how to bring it to life, let me know that too. I want to know what kind of content that I can make in the future that'll really benefit you guys. And if you want to support what I'm doing, be sure to get subscribed below because we are so close to hitting 10,000 subscribers. And thank you so much everyone who is already subscribed. So now that we've seen how other people are using the T display S3. I'm going to jump into what I am using it for for my LED wall project. I've talked in my other videos about my use of LED matrix control software HD or LMC SHD for short. It basically takes my computer screen, converts it into a pixel array, and then sends that pixel array to my LED wall. Now this is great for the LED wall currently, which only has a resolution of 64 pixels by 36 pixels. But my new LED wall that I'm working on right now has a way higher resolution resolution. In my last video, I showed off how I made this tile right here, which is made up of these 16 by 16 tiles that you can get pretty cheap online. And the new wall is going to be 16 of these panels. And this one panel has the same number of pixels as that wall. So I need a way to test out basically how fast of a frame rate I can get on this new display so that I can drive everything in parallel and get about 20 frames per second, which is my target. And that is where the T-Display S3 comes in. Now you can see up here, 
here. This is my current LED wall and I've plugged in the resolution of the new LED wall right there. And you can just see the sheer difference from this pixelated mess to how sharp the geometry looks with the higher resolution. And now I couldn't quite get it to work with the USB serial. And I think that has to do with the built-in USB functionality of this. But I do have a second one here and I've wired this guy up, kind of Frankensteined it. Uh, this is an SD card reader, which we're not using. And this is a USB to UART converter that I've just soldered directly to UART 1 on here rather than trying to use UART 0. If I zoom in, you can see that I am actually displaying my screen on here. And I'm not using the full 320 by 170 resolution because I want to be able to see exactly what my display is going to look like on here. But I'm sure you could see one small issue here, and that is it is not refreshing very quickly. So I've noticed that even though this does work, I'm only getting about three frames per second. It does not seem to refresh very quickly, and that is limited by the speed of this USB serial device. It only reads about one megabit per second, and one megabit per second is about three frames per second at a display of 182 by 128, which is a two to three aspect ratio. And although it does look really good, obviously this is not going to cut it with my new LED wall, so I'm going to have to use this right here to figure out how to make this display faster. It is worth noting that on here I'm only getting one megabit per second and on my actual hardware I get about two megabits per second so that would take me from three frames per second to about six frames per second but I want to hit about 20 frames per second so I'm gonna have to find a way to get the data off of my computer onto my actual hardware a lot faster than I can do it here. So as you can probably see I have my work cut out for me for this new version of the LED wall it's just really hard to drive that much data that quickly but I am intending to use the dual cores of the ESP32 S3 to essentially double that frame rate again. So if I'm going to be getting about six frames per second on my hardware, that should take it up to about 12. I'm still going to have to do a bit of compression probably. Maybe have to take it from 16 bit down to only eight bit color. I'm not entirely sure what that's going to do to the end product of the display though. I would rather lose a bit of frame rate to get a better image than sacrifice the image quality just to get a higher refresh rate. So that's going to be a trade-off I'm going to have to play around with. I will have another update on the new LED wall very soon. As you can see, my printer has been going absolutely non-stop. I actually wrote a script for it that allows the printer to push the print off of the bed, and I have a Raspberry Pi that is just running a queue, so it is just spitting out prints constantly day after day. This poor printer, super cheap, and I am running it like an absolute workhorse. It is taking it like a champ. So if you want this printer, I have a link to it down in the description. It is, a an, in it is an insane value for the price and I highly recommend it. Anyways, that's going to be it for this video. Thank you guys for watching all the way to the end. You are a real one. And remember to check out JLC PCB if you have any projects that need a PCB design in the future. Can't wait to see you in the next one.